This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and oh my God, what a difficult weekend. Our new little friend had the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip, the latest folding phone on the market. So it came out on February 14th, Friday. And over the weekend, of course, the YouTubers who specialize in basically destroying phones went to town destroying phones. So the channel Jerry Rig Everything, who attacks phone displays with Moe's hardness picks to see just how scratchable they are, gave it a go and discovered it was just as scratchable as a Samsung Galaxy Fold, even though this has a folding glass or ultra-thin glass display, abbreviated to UTG for ultra-thin glass. And then he poked it even harder and the pixels underneath were damaged, the OLED substrates. So that made you think maybe this wasn't glass. So Sam, everybody posted the news on the tech journals this weekend and Samsung responded and said, yes, it really is ultra-thin glass. But here's where they could have done better. Yes, it has a polymer layer over the top, just like the Samsung Galaxy Fold. And that is pretty easy to scratch. If you're unwise and you gouge your fingernail into it, you will leave a mark. Underneath there is a layer of ultra thin glass. They say this. And in fact, if you don't believe me, it's there's proof on the interwebs, as there always is of these things. One user, Amir, shared on Twitter his, he got a defective one, it looks like, and the center crease area just cracked the first time he folded it. So Samsung Concierge Service, apparently I hear, gave him a new one in like 24 hours, and I'm sure they're trying to figure it out, cracked in a classic grass, glass way. And then there's a channel called PBK that takes things apart too. And he actually separated the layers of the display. And you can see the top layer is indeed that polymer. And then there is a glass layer that does shatter once you really start to abuse it. And then a metal layer behind it. So that's the story. So, okay, Samsung didn't lie. That's great. So what's, what's wrong with all this? Well, and this is hard for companies to do. I wouldn't want to be Samsung, but they're saying, woohoo, it's the first glass display and promoting it. And not telling you what that means. Why, what's the point of doing it then if it's still pretty fragile stuff? Well, it has greater clarity. So you get richer blacks, you get richer colors as well, and it doesn't feel so plasticky under the finger. That's the, those are the benefits right there. But given how thin it is, it's thinner than a human hair, this glass layer, it can still damage pretty easily. So it's the same story as with all foldable phones. Do not poke at it, do not abuse it. Again, if you watch my Samsung Galaxy Fold four months later review, you know that it, with some care, it actually is fine. But you know who you are. Do you work in the construction industry? Do you install sprinklers for a living? Probably not going to be the phone for you because it's really hard to avoid grit and particles that are going to get on the screen and your fingers are going to grind it into the screen. Okay, so there's that. Here's how Samsung could have done it better. They could have said, it has foldable glass for better clarity and better colors and better feel, thereby not mentioning durability. If you just go and say it has a glass display, to most smartphone users that confers a level of durability that actually isn't here. Again, it's not easy being them, but you know, you don't want to say here, here's our latest super delicate product either, right? But I'll give you this. They do have a overlay protector on the screen that you are supposed to remove that. In fact, just like the Galaxy Fold says, do not poke at the screen, do not use pens on the screen. So they do provide a warning, but the marketing materials don't give you a clue. As ever, if the screen is defective, as in the case of the one that cracked on the first fold, then Samsung replaces it under their one year warranty. But if you damage it through your own mishaps and misdoing, then they'll charge you $119 in the first year. I don't know how much it's going to cost after that. So a little insurance there. There's been word that they might even provide an extra screen protector on top of what effectively is a screen protector layer. If you're super duper worried about it, uh, I wouldn't. And you're not supposed to put your own adhesive screen protectors on there. And for those of you who are wondering about the technology underneath, there are a couple of companies that Samsung has partnered with for ultra thin glass. We don't know exactly which one is the provider. I actually have a meeting with Samsung tomorrow. They happen to be in our town, so that's convenient. Whatever I find out, I'll either make a community post or I'll put it on Twitter. Do follow me on Twitter, or if it's really interesting, I'll make another video about that. This is the state of the industry. Plastic layer on top, ultra thin glass.
And then underneath that, you have the actually OLED layer, which can be applied either to glass or to bendable plastic. Both of those are perfectly permissible materials to apply the OLEDs to that actually make the pretty colors and all that sort of thing. And of course, there's a touchscreen layer too. It's actually pretty remarkable. If you watch my Moto Razor first look, you can see actually, because they don't anchor the screen down, how thin even that screen is. And to think that there's that much going on. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for cool and useful tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about them too.